Yeah, a film that has had a lot of attention um, for various reasons. Uh, this is Lars von Trier's Nymphomaniac Part 1, Part 2. Yeah, so uh, Lars von Trier, obviously the, the Danish director, born into a family, according to the internet, of nudists who didn't believe in discipline which I think explains quite a lot. A lot. Okay. Um, the Nymphomaniac Double Bill is, is described as the wild and poetic story of a woman's journey from birth to the age of 50, as told by the main character, the self-diagnosed Nymphomaniac Joe. So this is Charlotte Gainsbourg. And she's discovered um, one night by a guy called Seligman, Stellan Skarsgård, finds her beaten up on the street, takes her back to his flat, looks after her and listens to her, listens to her story as she, as she recounts um, her history, really, her life and, and the story of her relationships. Um, things I liked about it, Stacey Martin, who plays the young Joe, because a lot of the story is of her, you know, in her teenage years and in yeah. her 20s. She's great. Mm -hmm. Very kind of modern um, actri feeling actress. This, this combination of, on the one hand, she's quite classic English Rose. And on the other hand, she feels a bit like a dirty stop out. She's got a kind of, I just kept thinking, she's like Kate Middleton meets Kate Moss. It's this great kind of combination. And even when in the movie she's she's revealing everything you still feel that she's holding something back yeah. there's like a mysterious yeah. edge to her and i don't know if it's just in this film because it's the only film i've seen her in but i hope that we'll see her in a lot more movies and 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 i hope that we continue to see that kind of interesting side to her because i think she's absolutely got something uh, there's a great scene with Uma Thurman as well. Fantastic scene. Um, which is almost like a skit, really. It's it's like something from a sketch show. So she plays a cheated wife getting her own back on, on Joe, who's been having a fling with her husband. And it's funny. And it feels perhaps a little out of place, but it's certainly the best thing that Uma's done for a long time. And and there's a cheekiness to it that you don't always associate with Lars von Trier movies. Um, that really works. But actually, the biggest shock for me uh, watching these films is that for large stretches, and this is like four hours for both movies, um, I wasn't outraged and I wasn't in love with it and enlightened. I was sort of in the middle, really. And indifference isn't something that you would normally associate with, with Lars von Trier. He doesn't really do indifference. He wants love or hate. Uh, but I found myself right in the middle. And now there are director's cuts to this movie. Uh, the director's cut of the first part was shown at the Berlin Film Festival. I hear they are more out there. They are more graphic. Um, but I think the versions, we don't have those over here, the versions out over here, I'm not sure if they're quite as groundbreaking as I was hoping that they would be. Um, there's a, a great review. I mean, Derek Malcolm is a brilliant film reviewer anyway, but he said, you know, it's not his best film, it's not his worst film. And I kind of agree with that. I think that there are very interesting things going on in this, but considering like you said, the amount that it's been talked about, the poster campaign, which is very sort of out there and very shocking, mm -hmm. uh, the, the title, the topic, it's uh, considering all those things, it's just not quite as eye-opening as I would have hoped it to be. Um, and certainly not as shocking as other Von Trier movies. I mean, Antichrist was significantly more powerful than this. And I think Melancholia had a kind of magic to it that this mm -hmm. one doesn't have. Um, and for a man who likes to wind up his audience and to provoke and challenge and to sort of jab, um, actually, I didn't find that many challenging things. It, in all honesty, and uh, this might sound a bit jokey, but it's absolutely true, the most challenging thing I had, I found was Shia the birth's accent and i know it's a bit easy to take the mick out of a dodgy accent but i think when it becomes distracting and in the, certainly the audience that i watched it with were giggling when he was talking for some reason he's meant to be cockney now i don't really know why that is because yeah. stellan skarsgård who um is is swedish has his normal accent and you've got willem Charlotte, dafoe in there with his, got hers. willem dafoe american american yeah. accent so people just kind of spoke normally mm -hmm. uh but, <laughs> but charlotte Berth, who is who is sort of the 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 constant relationship that Joe has through her life. He's speaking, he's speaking with sort of Cockney uh, and it's it's really not very good. And it is just distractingly bad. And I think that's the problem. Yes, it's kind of ha ha, his accent's terrible, but when it puts you off focusing on some of the more serious points, mm. I think that there's an issue because there are, I mean, it's, it's a, there are lots of serious points in there. There are umpteen different cultural references, lots of bits of trivia in there about the Bible and about literature and classical music, fly fishing randomly. I mean, it is packed with loads of sort of cultural uh, name dropping um, and really serious points, you know, serious points about feminism and about society. But 
just when Shy is in there, you're thinking, look, fair enough, <laughs> Lars. I know you're really trying to do something serious, but blooming hell, his accent is terrible. See, and that's off-putting. The thing that I, was, I found kind of quite pleasantly surprising about it was because there was so much uh, based around the fact, you know, it's called Nymphomania Part 1 and 2. It was mm. going to be shocking. There was graphic sex scenes. You're going to see this, you're going to see that. It's going to it's going to disgust you, all this kind of stuff. And it didn't at all. No. I thought the, 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 the moments and the kind of story as it's been told by Charlotte Gainsbourg's character, Joe, to... Um, Stellan Skarsgård those moments are fantastic the story unfolding the way she tells it and the simplicity and the references that he makes and the comparisons he makes with her life story to you know you talk about religion and all that kind of thing I found absolutely fascinating Um, and with this film I mean for you did it did it shock you in that level as much as you were expectant to from what was kind of surrounding it. Yeah, I mean, I was expecting it to shock more and it didn't. Now, that might be deliberate. I'm not sure whether it's deliberate, considering, like I said, the title of it, the the marketing campaign in the run-up to it, yeah. just in terms of Lars von Trier's history of movie making. Yeah. I'm sure it was meant to be more, um, more kind of provocative, and I don't think it was. Um, and I'm not entirely sure, to be honest, where when it sort of reaches its conclusion, you know, and it makes the big points and it says, well, of course, would would we be treating a man in the same way if he was yeah. a male, you know, sex addict? Would we treat in the same way? And you think, well, I know, no, we wouldn't. But that's not really a new point, is it? That has been an issue of debate for many years. So you're not really coming up with anything groundbreaking and new. And although I found it interesting and there are great bits, it didn't really have a massive impact. And that was the shock. That was the surprise.